said basically about me apply it to a nine-year-old and he's doing this to grown ass men on the daily i love toasty to death and I shitting on him at the same he time. is hilarious because i'm like yo you got 36 year old men fighting with a nine-year-old <laughs> like, I, I shit you can't beat that i mean you can fight with me i'm grown but that's Real a shit. child bro you got a child bringing that out of you they that shit but i ain't gonna lie though i i love toasty but toasty know what to say to get under your skin I, I love Toasty, but Toasty know exactly what to say to get under your skin because when when I whenever I do one thing to annoy Toasty, Toasty start he start digging into me. He get he get into it. He start getting his little kid bag. He's and he young. start he don't know how to control. Oh he right no, now. but that's the thing about Toasty. Toasty got a good head on his shoulder. Toasty knows what he's doing. Toasty is very self aware. That's why I fuck with Toasty. That's why I don't I don't like kids, bro. I don't. Any like I if you're not in my family and even I don't it's kids in my family I don't talk to because I don't like kids. Don't keep them over there for real because that's just because I don't have time. You know. What I'm saying like I, I genuinely feel like I do not have time to be dealing with no kids of any in any capacity you know what I'm saying so to deal with Toasty like I fuck with Toasty because he got a, he got a good head on his shoulders if I tell Toasty bro you're annoying the shit out of me you gotta stop like you gotta stop or I'm about to boot you he'll hear me and he'll go all right bro I'll calm down and he'll, he'll for real calm down bro and then you mean 10 minutes later we get we right back with each other bobbed out yeah. that's why I fuck with Toasty like he's a different type of kid that's 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 the thing with Toasty, but that's also why these grown people, like, that's why these grown people be arguing with Toasty. I done argue with Toasty twice. I'll stand on that. I, I'm not proud of it, but me and Toasty done got into arguments twice, and Toasty is nine Dude, years he's old. He's good. He's, he's good, good, bro. He's good. He's good. He so know what to say. Good. And we're adults, and I know we sound ridiculous, but this nine-year-old, he knows if what you to hear say. some of the things Toasty says, mm -hmm. like, the other day, he just calmly, jokingly said on the mic, he was like, I see you, Trappy. My parents are dead. <laughs> Jokes on you, right, so bro? Uh, like, I, I was like, Toasty is smart as shit, bro. Like that, like somebody would be like, your mom is ugly. He'll be like, my mom is dead, but your mom doesn't love you. <laughs> Toasty, like you're sick, bro. I'd be like, you're sick in the head, like you're sick. But he don't get it because that's just his life. That's his. That's his reality. But that's how smart Toasty is. Like he's he's above it, bro. He's he he don't care, bro. Niggas be in the, in the lobby like. Toasty is built different. Toasty is built different. He got a good head on his shoulders. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't do too much in the game. Toasty, I don't know who I'm talking to. He's facts. hilarious. And like I told him, I said, and he's he is, good, trap, baby. And that's the crazy part. Mm -hmm. The kid is good. He's, he's good. so freaking good. It doesn't make any sense. He's great at the game, and he's smart, bro. Like, I can fuck with a kid that's smarter than than, than everybody, every other kid in his in his area. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I got some little nine-year-old cousins. They ain't half as smart as Toasty. And I love my cousins. Well, really well together. We can, bro, I can have a conversation with Toasty. Like, we can sit and talk about real shit with Toasty because to since Toasty lost his parents, he, he been through some real shit. Toasty done been through some real shit. Like, he, you mean? It's different. You know what I'm saying? That's why Toasty begin and argues with these grown-ass men because Toasty is a grown-ass man. Like, it's, it, it ain't little Toasty for us. Really big Toasty. You mean? Oh, Texas Toast. <laughs> yeah, Trap Baby. Toasty is a, bro, Toasty is a great kid. Like, we... Toasty is great. He's got a lot of potential. You know what I'm saying? He got a lot of energy. He's great at the game. He's a great personality. He's extremely helpful. Like he loved to go and mod people chats. He's always modded for somebody. Like Toasty is a great kid. Like he's great. That's why we rock with him. Like I said, I don't like kids. I really don't. That's not my thing. If you're not my kid or you're not some like I don't even like I said, I don't even really rock with the, the kids I in my family. Don't do kids, but I don't. Toasty is. I can fuck like he with says, Toasty. Toasty basically runs like he's an adult. I yeah. have to constantly remind myself. I honestly forgot he was nine until the other day we were talking about it in the chat. I was putting him at like twelve or thirteen again because he just he doesn't act nine and he, he doesn't play like a nine year old. Like no. I said, the kid is good, mm -hmm. but he be having these these grown ass guys going, and I'm like, I'll say it. I'm like, yo, y'all realize y'all arguing with a kid? Mm -hmm. Calm that shit down now. Relax. Like, yeah. You were, you, you're throwing racist slurs because of a nine year old. And I be I be on that too. That's the that's another thing about Toasty. You start getting real protective of Toasty because you really feel like you gotta protect that little nigga because he these niggas will really get on that nigga head and it's like bro you know he's nine right you hear this nigga you hear his voice like stop talking to him like that bro shut the fuck up like what are you why are you talking to this kid like that come on now get over well, it you don't talk to nobody kid like that nah. that's your own and damn even as a parent you don't need to be talking to no kid like that like calm down bro oh, shit. Let me read some comments they're, they're, real quick. Probably, like, I've seen Toasty make grown-ass men start throwing racial slurs, and I'm be honest. Mm -hmm. if, it, if a nine-year-old could pull that out of you, you was already racist. But you was already I'm racist. I'm going to let that go for now. Real shit. It, 
that's different. But Tosi will have them actually out there throwing these racist slurs. And I'm like, bro, he's nine. You he's nine. Got, you got that little self-control? Exactly. But let me read some comments real quick. Try baby, I see you. My flap clapper says she barely likes her own kid. I think that was the most hilarious thing I kept repeating in my head. That is so funny. That is so funny. Don't do it like that. Real bro. shit. Steve said he coaches not you football and they nowhere as advanced as him. Real shit. They're n- like these kids are not as advanced as Tosi, and it's because he's been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trap baby said he has a grown man mentality. He grew up faster than before faster than others and he experienced a lot at a young age so he just like fuck it exactly and that's why we that's why i work with toasty that's why he's a, i tell toasty to, to himself he's a he annoys the shit out of me but i love toasty because he's he's a good kid he's smart he's just nine years old he can't help it he, he literally cannot help it he's not he got you know what I'm he got too much energy he got more energy than me and that's not even that's I, something i didn't even think was possible so i really met my match with toasty you know what i'm saying queen of hearts i see you we getting into this podcast right now talking about everything we talking about everything, to be honest. Man, I get, gotta get in one of these small talks next time. You here right now, bro? You in it? You know what I'm saying? This is <laughs> this is a group thing, bro. This is this is a this is for all of us. You know what I'm saying? If y'all have anything y'all y'all want to say, anything y'all want to be input, any questions y'all want asked, please please drop them in a in a uh, freaking comment. If I missed it, please reiterate it. You know what I'm saying? Sour Dang, I seen you ask me what Streamlabs was. I can uh, whisper you more about Streamlabs. That's just a bot for your Twitch that you know what I'm saying helps you do stuff, but. Yeah, man. Anybody got anything? You know what I'm saying? They want to touch on anybody? Got anything they want to bring up? You know. I have a question. Of course. Do you think it's a level of toxicity when it comes to women in the gaming community? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I play. COD with... is one of the worst places of it, and I'll stand <laughs> on that. They're dead ass. Some of the worst places for a woman to be in in, in gaming. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh, the offense out of out of men that I am in a lobby is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Ridiculous. Nine out of ten beefs with me is because they heard me say something and realized I was a female, mm-hmm. which is why I make the comments I do on masculinity. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it really do sing them. Because I can tell you're upset. I'm here. You yeah. mad? I'm here. God forbid I'm good. You mad? I'm here. Oh shit, and I'm good. Oh, it's the problem. Exactly. It's the problem. I'm sorry. I actually I ain't sorry. Nope. Cause I'm still be I'm still be beating down on your shit. Sorry. Hey, you gonna have to take this out today. I'm doing happily. Real shit. Per it. And that's why. And Eddie and I talk a lot about this because you know, I play with a lot of female gamers, and when it starts to come to like I know when to shut my mouth, and a lot of a lot of niggas don't know when to shut their mouth, and that's a lot of that's a lot of men's problem. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I've always known when like I got homies who will do the make me a sandwich thing, and I never felt the need. I never felt the need to be like that. Like I'll be toxic towards a woman because we playing the game. You know what I'm saying? You say something smart, I'm gonna say something smart back. But it's never been some bitch get in the kitchen make me a sandwich. Come on, bro. Why you gotta go there? Come on, bro. You know what I'm saying? Why do I have to be a dyke because I play the game? I exactly. like that. Oh my gosh! And I'm gonna say it in a minute. I'm proudly, <laughs> I'm proudly like me a man. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I do know my lesbian, and she probably do it better than you. I know she do. I know she do. Actually, facts. We've been in group chats. You see it in party chats too. Like I played. I've been in a lot of party chats with a lot of different types of guys and. You can even see it, and then how how they choose to act sometimes. Some people handle it differently, you know. And I think a lot of it is just like maturity. Absolutely. Mature guys like Irk are the ones that they really just like. He said, "I'm gonna talk shit to you because you're talking shit. I don't mind that. Please do. Yo, we can go in on each other. Hey, we can actually go out here and sell some skill. We can actually say GGs at the end of the night. But you know, it's some guys out here that they just cannot. They their maturity level is literally at negative. <laughs> at zero. It's at zero. <laughs> Seriously. Why? I truly believe these are the guys who like they don't go out. <laughs> no, they don't touch grass. They don't. They don't. They don't. They've don't. never seen a woman in their life, and it's and it's crazy because before I before I even say that. Rise says toxicity towards women in the video game community is just mind blowing, and it is. And that's, it's crazy because you would really think a lot of these dudes have never seen a woman in real life, as if they don't have a mother, as if they don't might like possibly have a sister. You know what I'm saying? Some of these dudes have daughters, and it's like, how do you, how do you find time to know women in real life, have a girlfriend? 
and say things like this. You know what I'm saying? Like how how like how ingrained is sexism within the gaming community that a lot of people who would not, not even normally be sexist come on the game and just are all of a sudden super sexist. Like that shit is it, it's insane. It's definitely mind blowing. You know? It's crazy. It's a video game, bro. Chill. <laughs> it's a video game. Rise says facts. Being oh, uh... Thank you. Uh, Raj, my bad, I had to get a split. <laughs> Raj says, being toxic towards a female because of the game is one thing, but to make these comments is just childish. Dudes really like the ability to comprehend the fact that women can play games and are usually better than they are. I admire any woman who enjoys the same things I do, especially video games. Especially video games. You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit is... You should be bonding over that. You should be excited that you found a woman... Who can who can do the same thing that you like? Cause I know a lot of women who don't give a flying fuck about video games. You know what I'm saying? And that shit, be That's mad about that. Yeah, real shit. Queen of Hearts says it's the detachment. They can get behind the screen and detach the fact that there's another human being behind the screen. <laughs> Idiots. Idiots. That's just I, I can't separate the two. Like the same way people say they can separate an artist and their and their music, I can't separate the two. You know what I'm saying? You are a human being behind your gamer tag, and I know that for a fact. I know the things that I say. If it's something extremely negative, you're going to take that home, and you're going you're gonna to sit with that. You're going to soak in that, and that's going to affect you, even though I'm a random stranger that you've never met. You, you've never seen my face once in my life. You know what I'm saying? But... I'm comfortable saying that because you know you're never going to see this person. And that's what it is. They just like, ah, I'm never going to see you. Like, fuck it. Like, those are the trolls. I mean, and... I, and I think that's probably like a gaming issue as a whole is we just randomly accept the fact of trolling. Yeah. Like trolling should not be acceptable, but it's just almost a factor of life in the game. Like there are some people who just, they do get in and they take that detachment and they run a thousand miles. Yeah, that's true. Queen of Hearts says, same with motherfuckers that get on and be racist and then get off the game and go hang with their black friends. Like, what? Exactly. Yes. Exactly. And if you accept that out of your friends, you sh shame on you, because you shouldn't. Bro, I, hey, if I catch you on the game acting one way and I know for a fact that's not how you act in real life, I'm, I'm stinging you. Like, yo, what? I'm on your ass. For that reason, I do not game with my real life friends. I, if, if I know you Smart. in real life, we probably do not game together. Uh, outside of like just the people I really know I'm gonna be with forever like yo yeah. I do not game with co-workers I don't game with like friends none of that like all most of my friends like I I, I tell them the, especially this because the people I started gaming with were a sector to themselves yo if you step in here and, and they say you gotta go I hope you know I ain't trading out the game in the homies no facts you gotta go. I hope you know. I yeah. hope you know. I had a coworker one time. He started playing with us. I broke the rule one time. And I went to the store and I came back and he was in the lobby with me instead of in the game where the rest of the party was. And I knew then. I was like, uh oh, you something done up. went amiss. You fucked and I up. get in there and I hear, uh uh, I'm not playing another game with him or anything. I'm not playing another game. I'm like, oh, that's my government. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you what you yeah, tell me what you're gonna do, bro? What you do? Like, damn. <sighs> yes. I, I hope I can't stay in this lobby with you, bro. I gotta, I gotta go. <laughs> and and that's crazy that you say that because I love the game with my boy Soup. You know, I know Soup in real life. We was gaming with a Jerko for a little bit. I don't know if you remember him, Petty. We was doing a little bit with him, but before he broke mm -hmm. his PS4, and he was risky because a Jerko says a lot of sexist shit. He says a lot of uh, a lot of shit that I'd be like, bro, come on, like, sh like, shut the fuck up. Like, I, and I've had to tell him, like, I've been live and I've been had to say, like, bro, like, I've had to say, like, Seth, shut, shut up. Like, come on, bro, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? Because he, he does like to be, he likes to be risky. You know what I'm saying? He likes to say shit like that because he thinks it's funny. So I did have to stop gaming with him on stream because it's like, bro, you're, you're embarrassing me right now. Like, you're kind of making me look bad. Like, I'm bringing you into this party with these people. And, like, you're my real life homie. Like, I'm not going to stop hanging out with you in real life. But, like, can you stop, like, coming in here and doing shit that, uh, like, we don't do on air? Like, technically, because that's what it is when you stream. You're on air. We don't do this shit on air, bro. Like, I stopped doing toxic shit on air. So, can you stop doing that shit, bro? Like, it's not a part of my message. It's not a part of my message. Exactly. That's not what I'm here to display. Like, we can do that offline. If you know what I'm saying, if I'm not streaming, it, I, we want to get toxic. Cool. If I say I'm streaming, bro, let that shit go. Stop being weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's something I had to say to him a lot. But I also had to realize 
I, that's why I stopped gaming with him on live because I'm not here to change you. You my homie. I knew you yeah. from the rip. I already knew what kind of person you were. So I'm not even mm-hmm. here to make you change the things you say. But we ain't yeah. going to do this on my platform, I'll tell you that. You know what I'm saying? You definitely got to draw them lines for sure. Mm-hmm. Queen of Hearts says, same, Petty. I don't game with people I know in real life. And Rise also says, that's why I rarely talk when I play games anymore. People genuinely forget that we're all humans just trying to enjoy the same hobby. And Steve-O says people love attention. And all three of those things are just just, mm-hmm. just spot on, you know. They're just <laughs> spot on. I just game with my best friend because he's the only one that I'll actually, like, play any game with. So I'm like, yo, let's go play this. And he's like, okay, I'm down. Life bet. Let's get to it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely become one of those things where you have to be like no new friends sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I think like, so like him, I you lock it, you lock on. it in because you be like, look, I know this is good, and that's why I say, like, you know, I don't really risk, you know, those relationships I have with those people because at the end of the day, these are people I've known for like four or five years, six, going on yeah. six years in some cases. Like, yo, like we, I, if nothing else, this is one person who go text me and make sure I'm alright because they know, oh, she ain't been on a game. Like, her standard look a week is a max you ain't seen me in a week people start asking questions like yo i got oh, real shit. life friends who don't even do that so you think oh, I'm happy? yo what do you think I, I, that's the homie no no matter what yeah just sick because like, my friend is like a real life friend so we do everything together kind of thing we just game together we hang out together we fucking work together but like we like we're actual friends like I won't, if, like, he ain't on, I'm not going on kind of thing. Like, if I'm not on, he's not joining anyone else kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Like, he's making sure, we're making sure both of us are playing together. Like, mm-hmm. there isn't no, I'm not playing without you unless, like, it's a walk. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I'm always with, I'm like, shout out to Friday, so. I'm always with Friday. <laughs> oh, wait, then, like, Friday. <laughs> We're flying now. <laughs> like, okay, yep. I said, bet, bet, bet. <laughs> on my way. <laughs> yeah. Queen of Hearts says, I've gotten to the point where I won't play a game. This candy is fucking me up. If I'm having a bad mental health day. I play Call of Duty a lot, and those lobbies are so toxic towards women, it's insane. <laughs> it's hard. Hey. Yeah. Hey, it goes that. That's why I said what I said, where... I was like, yo, I it, I can't game if I'm really having a really over stu- a stressed out bad day because you do you get in there and that that's a lot of it is because those guys are so toxic that you already know you're gonna have to go in here and play on ten, and eventually like if you're just really not in it, it, it that is not the day for it. Like that's yeah, the last facts. thing I'm trying to put my head through is is that meat grinder because that's a whole task in itself. Like, you're just like, you know what, like, and, and especially for me, I'm competitive. You know, I know I can be good. I know what I play like when I'm good. You know, and Irk will say I cap a lot. I do. I do cap in a minute. And that's because I like that unsuspecting factor. And also because I am, I, I'm day-to-day shoddy some days. Uh, if the weed too strong, I'm not capping. I'm telling facts. But, you know, it's, you know, you want to go in there and you want to play well. You want to play at 5,000. You want to go put on and perform and put out that effort you know you can. And so you get really irritated when those guys are talking shit. Here lately, I've learned in search, I mute out. I've been muting the whole Did lobby. You? And yep. just like, you know, only playing with squad comms, you know. And then at the end, yo, shout out to Big Irk. At the end, we unmute and we go ham. We go ham. <laughs> unmute. But yo, fuck on you. Do that man. Because the level of toxicity sitting in, in search is so bad. Like, mm-hmm. I just honestly, I really don't get it. I didn't understand, like, I didn't know Call of Duty could get that bad. Now I understand why when I go play other games, people are saying Call of Duty is a different type of toxic. I used to, like, get in discords and be like, what do you mean? People reference COD toxicity in its own factor. Like, oh, that's that COD toxicity out there. Like, like, we're known for this shit. Like, bro, that's already bad enough. And now you're telling me that. You don't know why I, I've discovered it. It's in search. This is if this is how y'all act. This is why they're talking about us this way. Yeah, in fact, <clears throat> Queen of Hearts says, "Petty, same. I really used to let these people take me out of my peace. I mute fast as fuck now." And Mudflap says, "Petty will tell you I have gone months without playing, and I believe that." Yes, yeah, it's like some. Like, yes, you have to do what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Some people like are really we. 
are human beings dealing with real life shit. If you think I got time to put up with this shit, I don't. And I commend people. I commend you, Karen, for taking that break and saying, nah, fuck this. I'm not buying oh, another Call of Duty. I'm not doing this again. I'm not going to keep throwing money at a game that's broken to allow people to talk shit to me like I don't. I, I'm not good. I'll go play something else. Facts. I'll take a break. You gotta step back. Sometimes that you gotta step, step back. Crucial. You know a game is bad when it has its own category of toxicity. I never met a community so toxic before, but I enjoy the game, so I find ways around it. Exactly. I love Call exactly. of Duty. Exactly. I love Call of Duty, so I'm gonna keep playing it, but I will keep trying to mute people and do this, that, and the third, so that way I don't have to deal with it. Muff Flap Clapper says, My meds aren't strong enough. You know? <laughs> the weed ain't yeah, strong enough. We Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's depending what you're playing too. If you're not e- if you're on console or PC, it's a fucking war between them. Because it's a war zone, bro. Cause like with DVD, I you can't see the PC chat, so we don't know what's going on. You'd be like, oh, console players suck. Your console players suck, and it's just like, just because we're on console doesn't mean anything. that's so it's whack, like, what bro. Makes dif- what makes a difference that we're on console? than being on PC. It's the same fucking thing, but a, 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 what? <laughs> like, I don't get the concept. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like the worst case that he said, she said, because I mean, honestly, right. like, y'all got it, it, and Eric, you could attest to this, there are gains to being on a mouse and keyboard. The same way there Big are games. gains to being on a controller. Uh-huh. We both got issues, though. The, the game is still broken, though. It's still so, broken. Like, why, like, why grind? Because you probably lost? Or, like, what? Like, Real <laughs> shit. That's why you're mad. That's why you're mad. Yeah. Chronic says, Petty is 100% right. And Steve-O says, with COD, it's like I'm pissed up until I get right off. Yeah, like. Yep. <laughs> you do that terrible. weird calm zone of just like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about this game no more. Yeah, exactly. Turn it off. Real shit. <laughs> Turn that shit off. For a second. If you're catching me in the first five seconds of that game, I out. See ya. I'm quitting. Like you're hacking. Like, you're hacking. Game. It's done. Why? How? How are you gonna get me in two seconds? I just started the fucking game. Yeah. Like, I'm going. I'm out. Yeah. Oh, Hackers really ruin the game. Every game. They do. Every what game. enjoyment do you find? Real shit. Y'all, really? y'all keep going real quick. I gotta use the bathroom. I, I, I want to know what enjoyment do you even really find as a hacker? Cause I'm be honest, I'd be bored after about five games. Because when I master a card and I feel like I've officially gotten good and I just touch down and do this shit no effort, I actually am really kind of on my last leg with the card. I don't know what else to do at that point. So if you're getting hacked and you can do whatever you want and it, you're not even trying at this point, what are you, what end game is it for you? What are you getting out of this? <laughs> I would like that explained to me. Tell me. And I watch the videos, too, of, like, the guys who are like, oh, we're going to spectate this hacker or the, uh, this guy. Like, these hackers actually post videos on YouTube. And you're just like... The wall hacks. You can see, like, the wall hacks. And you can see, like, um, they're seeing through walls. It's crazy. The walls. Yeah, it's crazy. With DVD, there's a couple of, there's a couple of guys that actually do a couple of that stuff. Like, uh, make videos about toxic players or, like, yeah. toxic... Stream, like Twitch streamers and stuff that hack and stuff like that, like it's just crazy what they do. Right, like and it's caught on stream too. Like how are you gonna go on stream and still get hacked, but still not get caught? Like what? Like I don't get. It. How long has Dead by Daylight been out? It's been out since like 2018. So, or no, 2016 or 17. No, I feel like 2017 or 16 because. When I, I stopped gaming from, like, 2015, 2017, then I, like, picked up the PS4 back in the day, and I I bought Dead by Daylight, and <laughs> this is why I didn't play for, like, a really long time until probably last year when I started streaming, because I did not like DVD at all. Like, I hated it. I don't know why. I was more into the Friday the 13th. Mm-hmm. It felt, it was just more toxic, but that's another toxic game, too. But anyways, um, my story was, I played, I think I was playing Killer for, like, my first time ever. Like, I 
after like I just literally got the game, so I don't even know what I'm doing. Like nothing, don't know what's going on or anything. So I'm like, okay. I get messages. Just beyond messages, you're a camper, you're a camper, you suck at the game, you're cancer to the game, blah blah blah. blah. And I was just like, <laughs> All right, see ya, I'm not even playing DVD again. <laughs> <'Cause> like <laughs> I wasn't I with me it's because like I just got the game, so I was like, Okay, I'm gonna try it out. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm just playing for fun. Like this is just a fun game to me. Like yeah. And since there was still no game chat, <clears throat> game chat back then, so you have to message the people. And I don't think it was crossplay like yet. Like it was probably just with like Xbox or something, because like now it's crossplay with everything. But yeah, it was it was bad. Like the toxic back up back then was probably worse. But like now it's like. 10 times worse because like everyone's playing it more now because it's yeah. bigger yeah. Mm. back it's then it was just now. like oh like no one really knew about the game kind of thing it was just like if you didn't really know what you're doing you're still gonna get called a camper either way but like <laughs> can't win I think just... if my game play and know that you won't know it's mm -hmm. right <laughs> I did what I was supposed to. It's hard. Like, I can't, I, oh, that's why I'm Survivor the half time, half the time, because, like, killer is just, like, hard. Like, I get it why the killers are, be toxic, because of the survivors are toxic, too. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just, like, and that's the thing, like, I feel like us survivors don't get that, like, we're like, oh, they're being toxic. But the killers are like, oh, these survivors are all being toxic, or, like, this main... Me, everybody thinks like, everybody's yeah. being toxic. Yeah, like it's just like a toxic, <laughs> yeah. like cry, like a toxic, like crying square kind of thing. Like it's just, it's just like you're being toxic. No, you are. <laughs> no, you are. No. <laughs> yeah, it's like a spider man. <laughs> no. <laughs> so Rice says, only thing that separates PC from console is the gameplay, is like the game performance. I play on PC right. and still lose the console players all the time. Like it shouldn't matter who plays what. Yeah, pretty much, right. like pretty much. And Queen of Hearts said, "Well, my flap clapper says that's why she left GTA. I might have been oh, in the Lord. bathroom." Oh, in regards GTA, might have been talking about hackers. Oh, These guys oh, in shit. GTA, oh my gosh, they built different. Built yeah. different. Oh, in the lobby, you're just getting killed for no reason. Like, Real shit. Anyway. It's too it's much. Boring. Yeah. It's like, too much. And the Queen of Hearts says, "It's for people to be toxic." Too Man, it's so toxic. GTA is toxic. But Queen of Hearts says the crazy part is hacking is expensive as fuck. Fact. A, a lot of hackers. She said she met a lot of hackers. Hackers. Some were really good friends. These motherfuckers would pay four to five hundred dollars to be able to hack. Like why? Like she also says if you want to burn your money, just give it to me, and I feel that too. But you know what I'm saying? Like literally, what's the point? To you because I I wish I had me a little hack, a little hack set. Something like y'all, I would cheat. Me, be on my team. I'll never land mm -hmm. with a random blueberry hacker on my team. Mm -mm. But like, I imagine like four to five hundred dollars. You're just burning money for what? For why? For what? what did you accomplish here? You bored as hell, bro. Go read a book. What's the point? Go read a book, bro. Hacking is useless. Like I feel like hacking is hacking is why Call of Duty is so bad now. Because oh, everybody yeah. is hacking. Damn there, everybody named mom is hacking. But it's like. Nobody's good at the game. Like it's like three good people in the game and a hundred hackers, and like then it's like everybody else is just kind of like playing the game for fun. And it's like it's mm -hmm. over, it's so oversaturated. Like it's so oversaturated, bro. It's and then the game got the audacity to be broken. Like the audacity of it all. What is it but not? Hey, wow. We're gonna add all of this on top of the game is broken. So hey, bro, shit. I'm dead. Over giving Call of Duty money, like I, I know a lot of people who they, they were buying their Call of Duties every year standardly. We as a whole like eight, ten man squad was buying Call of Duty every year to play. Yep. And then it was like, why? You started why? With one, and then it was like two, three, four, five, and before you knew it, it, was only one or two of us buying it. And it was like, well, why are we even buying it? Like, like what's happening right now? Real shit. Mm -hmm. Real shit. But, so. All right. Have you ever been part of any uh 
Oh, wait. Rise says, it was lovely chatting with you guys. She thinks he needs a little nap. If I'm on COD, COD later, we'll definitely run some. Bet. Enjoy the rest of the talk. I look forward to the next one. Hey, no, we'll Rise, be on COD. Definitely yeah. Yo, big bro, you are mad good. Rise was yeah, out there Rise putting is in fire. work in customs last night, man. That, Rise is fire. She's got He's a good. nasty shot. Real shit. Shout out to you for coming through, bro. But, um, so have you guys been a part of any, uh, toxic gaming communities? Discord, otherwise, Facebook. One more time, please. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to speak on that? If you want. Um, I think with every community you step in, it's good with, it's bad along with good. Like, mm -hmm. you have to expect the bad with the good. Um, I've seen a lot of toxic communities, like, they'll kick you out just because you're not talking in a community, but you're still active, actively going to people's twitches and mm -hmm. watching their streams. They'll kick you out. They won't even tell you why they're kicking you out. That you're just banned. Um, you have different communities where the leaders are just toxic, and then they're leading their uh, their people to be toxic along with them. That's true. There's people are um, doing hate raids. It's, it's a lot of craziness. That um, too. So That's yeah, true. I have a lot of um, a lot of. <laughs> it's definitely a lot of a lot of toxicity within like the gaming community. It's like it's it's, it's extremely selective. It's like extremely favoritism based, and it's hard, man. It's hard to it's hard to it's hard to get around that shit, like, mm -hmm. cause it's so common. Bad apples can spoil a whole bunch. Mm -hmm. One bad experience will fuck up all of them. Yeah, yeah literal real shit. Cause if I come into a community and I see like a lot of toxic behaviors and a lot of arguing going on in the chat and just a bad overall like vibe, I'm mm -hmm. going, I'm out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like what did I step into? Real shit. I'm out just as quick as I came. Stage left. Mm -hmm. I'm good. What do you think are a few things that make would make a toxic community? Mm -hmm. I think just a community that just overall just doesn't care about their people. Like or you just said for everything. Yeah, favoritism is a big thing. Racism in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Bad moderation. Mm -hmm. I, I truly believe if mods ain't on their grind in your chats and your discords or like, not like if you're running a discord for example and your mods aren't on their job like, or they're God forbid they out there doing the shit. What does that say to everybody else that you've added in there? Real shit. What does that say to? You? Everybody, like I've been in some discords where like they have the mods are just like they be out they be gone. And the Discord is in chaos, and, the, and there's not a mod to be found. Not a mod to be found. And then they pull up later trying to serve out some stuff. You like, wait, what are you doing, bro? Like, yeah. You think he really cares? They all know you. Like you are a young mod deck available from such and such time to such and such time. Like, come on now. And I think that reflects the whole community as a whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It yeah. does. It definitely will fuck up your image. And pick and choose. Whatever. If you want to do a whole community, you gotta come in one. You can't just pick one, you know, and just and just fuck with them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had a I had a hard time with that when I had the Discord the first time around, and that's why I really want to change it up because I was like, you know what? I'm watching a lot of my favorite people, but I'm not watching a lot of new people. So I wanted to like, you know, what I'm saying like try and do something different because that that's a that's a hard really thing. Not. You know, what I'm saying like that's a hard thing yeah. to do. To like, you know what I'm saying? Like, not exclusively watch your favorite Twitch streamers every day. Because nine times out of ten, your favorite Twitch streamer is one of your homies. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when Petty goes live, if I'm busy, I'm going to go watch Petty. It could be, you know what I'm I saying? Like, there. I want to be there. Yeah. It could be ten other people live doing whatever they may, may be doing that I, I'm supposed to get to. But as soon as Petty go live, boom, I'm there. As soon as Vasai and J Charms go live, boom, I'm there. CSJ, boom, I'm there. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's a really a hard thing to get, to get around. But it's definitely... An important thing to get around if you want to lead a community, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to make sure that you're evenly spreading your attention to all of your community members, you know what I'm saying? So that they all feel, you know what I'm saying, like that they're welcome. And that's a, that's definitely like a key to keeping think, away from toxicity. I think you'll have a lot of the time, um, community members won't be open to new people coming in, mm -hmm. and they'll just ignore them. Fact. Just ignore them completely and act like they're not speaking in the chat. Just, it's, it's 
It's rude. And I think as the leader, it's it's up to you to like engage that person and, and make sure yeah. that the community is not, you know, mm-hmm. treating them no type of way. Fact. Very true. Well, Chronic says a thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> right. I CHJ Discord, just, Discord is lit though. I just made it was just like whatever. Since I'm just gonna be streaming, I might as well just make a little own Discord for everyone kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. not like I'm making it a community like yeah, I'd rather yeah. be joining with your like her squad or like someone like I was in Raiders and like whoever I'm with, you know, kind yeah. of thing. Like, but And that's another thing that a lot of people don't even talk about is every community doesn't have to be a support for support community. Every community doesn't have to be yeah. a come and and drop your links and make sure you're supporting yeah. everybody. Yeah. You know, like that's not you can have a community where you just vibing. Like I like our like Erk Squad, you know what I'm saying? Like it's if you wanna support, we got options. We got people who you can support, you know what I'm saying? If you wanna support people, boom, we got live links every time. Like it's always somebody love. You know what I'm saying? But it's not like I'm in your faces like, yo, you, yo Did you go check out did you go check out pressure? Did you go check out it mean like because it's not like that. We're not, here for that. we're not here for that. We're here to come in and bob and have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Recently, we've been, I've been fucking with the Pokemon shit we've been doing. I didn't even know I cared about Pokemon that much. But I'm yeah, like, okay, yeah. fuck it. I just still haven't picked the Pokemon. That was my problem. See, Petty is falling behind. All of our Pokemon going to be level 50. Your John is going to be level one. I didn't know what to pick. You're going to be getting beat up. I'm going to pick one today. I said I was sitting in stone today. You know? You mean and and just stuff like that. Like it's if you don't want to have a support for support Discord, you don't have to. Just make something that you can have a good time in because everybody should have their own community. If you're a streamer, you absolutely should have your own community. If you want to make a community where you are just po- the only link that gets posted is your link. I'm part of a few Discords like that because like the uh, the bull I had posted in the uh, in the Call of Duty chat for us, the Jolt guy. I, I'm in his Discord. I don't talk to a single soul in there, but I'm in there because when he go live, I want to see it. I want to make sure I see when he posts a YouTube video, like shit like that. I'm there just for that. And if you have Discords like that, then be there for that. But it's definitely important not to make help aiding into like aiding a, into a community being toxic by not helping the community do what it's supposed to is like that's just as toxic as you know what I'm saying like coming into community and just watching it fall apart. Like do you do your part. Or leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? This exactly. Is- Coming in and expecting something different or, mm-hmm. you know, being upset. Like, I think that was a big thing with, like, the podcast you guys had to have last night. Mm-hmm. Maybe a lot of you came in here and y'all were under the wrong assumption, which you shouldn't be. But, you know, you have to understand the intended purpose of the Discord that you're in. And if you don't, that's creating a sort of toxicity in a sense mm-hmm. that, yo, now you have people who are upset because you're not falling in line with what should be done. Exactly. And it's like, yo, this is what you're here for. If you're if this, if this is not a just come and observe Discord, go to a Discord where you can just come chill and vibe and observe. Okay. But don't sit somewhere where that's not intended, and then now you want to be upset, and they're upset. Exactly. I think it's very important to be aware. Of Shadow. Before you even join it. Mhm. It's very, it's very important to be aware of that. There's been many a Discord that I was about to join, and it's. Oh, like, cause I'm part of enough support for support discords already. Like, I don't, I can't join another one. So now I join discords where I can go in and maybe I just want to talk to new people. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Be selective with who you join and what you join because, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on now. You gotta, you know, don't aid into that toxicity at the end of the day. Real shit. And Chronic is agreeing with you 100%. Petty, 1,000%. Jay Charms, I'm sorry. Say that again, please. I think it's important to foster like-minded individuals. Mm-hmm. That there's no chaos. Real shit. They're not all over the place. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Real shit. Know your role. Know what you got going on. Mm-hmm. Real shit. So. You gotta know why you're here. Exactly. Know why you're here. Real a lot shit. of people are new to Discord, but you gotta. That that's a key fact right there. Know why you're there. Mm-hmm. You know you'll 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 stumble into a lot of Discord. You'll find a lot of servers. But you got to pay attention to those roles and the actual information in those beginning setup lines because that's Mm -hmm. going to tell you what exactly everyone else is here for. And if that's Mm -hmm. not something you plan to be there for, you you need to go ahead and start planning your escape. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Because ain't nobody going to feel bad. 
Mm, yeah, and that's I, perfectly she fine. She didn't even say, yo, I read y'all's description. Thank y'all for letting me in, but I think I'm going to dip. You ain't even got to yeah. say nothing. I'm pretty sure nobody even going to say nothing even then. No. You know, but, you know, if there's no need to create more chaos than you have to by staying somewhere you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And that's no hard feeling. They'll still be in your chat on Twitch. They'll be around. But I'm just not, if it's just familiar, it's not me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's okay to even go in there and be like, yo, you got a personal Discord? Because what you may find is like you, like Erk said, he's in a lot of Discords. You could come in a Discord where y'all may not be there for the, you may be, not be there for the same reasons, but you could still reach out and say, yo, you got a Discord? I mm -hmm. bet. I think I need to be over there. Uh, I, I, yeah. Let me slide over there. Exactly. I can still link up with you and see your live feeds. Still. Big Ninja, Dark Shadow, I see y'all. Shadow said he got a rebirth win with three team wipes and 11 kills. Mm, my boy is on it. Keep going, keep going. But let's transition from, because we're at an hour and 30 minutes, first of all. Great job, guys. This has been amazing. We're doing amazing. This is, this is perfect. Mwah, chef's kiss. But <laughs> let's let's transition for the last 30 minutes because we will cut it off at two hours because I'm not trying to edit a three-hour podcast, just to be honest. Let's transition from toxicity within gaming to toxicity within, you know what I'm saying, the real world, our families, whatever you may want to talk about. How often do you experience or do you feel you experience toxicity on a daily basis? Or maybe on a <laughs> weekly basis, you know, whichever you're comfortable with answering. Whoever. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> she said a lot. <laughs> Period. Every day. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> Every Wait, day. Say that again. How often do you feel that you deal with toxicity? You know what I'm saying? Like maybe outside of game and just, you know what I'm saying? Like in the real world, within your families. Uh oh. You know, a daily, daily basis. Damn, uh, that's that's crazy that we all are under that agreement. That's like that's kind of fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And I feel most people probably do feel that way, and that's 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 a fucked up thing to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like because we are all adults, and it's like damn, mm -hmm. you deal with that as kids because that's natural. Everybody's always on your ass. Everybody's always hassling you. And then you you become an adult, and you still deal with daily toxicity, and it's like damn, where the peace Some people at? People never grew up. <laughs> yeah, like it's like where the yeah. peace at? That's crazy. That's crazy. Like it, My it's, family it's, has a lot of deep seated, deep seated toxicity that cannot be helped just in one. I don't. It just cannot be helped. At this agreed. Point. Yeah. <laughs> it's rough. I think uh, we're all at that point. It's, it's, we can't. We can't even all be in the same. Yeah. It's just it's um my family. And I think it's just a sense of normalcy within our community. Um, it's not an activism cover it up. We're gonna drink our problems away, and then we're just gonna have to be codependent on us. And um, I think it's just it's a lot. It is a lot. That's a lot that can't. I think it's a lot. Um, and then therapy is not even even thought about the black community at all in the black community, bro. This is new. Yeah. This is something new that's breaking in the yeah. black community, getting, like, therapy and help. Like, it's it's crazy. And it's insane because I was offered therapy when I was younger, like, just mm -hmm. off some traumatic experience. But I was in there like, why would I sit and talk to this woman? I don't know her. She's not in my family. Like, I don't... Why am I talking to her? And it was a black woman, too. Like, it's not even like, like, my mom made sure that I was sitting in front of a black woman. She made sure that it was, you know what I'm saying, like, somebody within my community. But I still didn't feel like that was hitting, like, that was not normal for me. I never knew anybody black who went to therapy. So I'm sitting in this therapy yeah. office like, I'm not crazy, bro. What am I here for? Yeah, I'm like, bro, I'm not crazy. Like, what is going on? And it's like, that's not what it is. You don't have to be crazy to get therapy. You just may need a little help. You may need somebody to talk to. Like therapy is really not something that's normal within the black community, and it's 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 extremely disappointing because, yeah, and that's why we have so much so much generational trauma. You know what I'm saying? Like I think about that a lot. Like a lot of people off have, on. yeah, a lot off and on. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have generational wealth. A lot of people have that, and the, a lot in the black community is a lot of generational trauma. Like it's just trauma passed down from generation to generation. It's it's extreme. Uh, let me see, read something uh, that Queen of Hearts is saying really quick. She said a lot of people, uh, 
excuse me. A lot of people have major uh, microaggressions. They refuse to acknowledge, so they force the people around them to deal with it. She says she has a friend that I love to death, but she is so toxic and triggering, triggering that she's had to distance herself. And it's wild that as black people, we're expected to just thug shit out. Honestly, everyone should go to therapy at least once. Facts. I'm a Bingo. firm believer. Mm-hmm. Everyone should Bingo. Like, at least have one little therapy session. Mm-hmm. Open-mindedly get I think a lot of people, and I understand that for a lot of people, that their first experience with a therapist was extremely bad, and it is hard to find a good therapist. But normalize that you aren't crazy for needing a therapist. No. It, that that does not mean you're crazy. That just means you decided to use a constructive tool to help. Uh, therapy exactly. is something that even people who are quote-unquote normal should like to see. I have friends that who knew of my condition with bipolar and knew I was going to a therapist. And there were a lot of them who were like, do I have to have something wrong to go see a therapist? These are questions they're asking me. And I'm like, no, you can go schedule one if you got insurance. Um, Real shit. Like, yeah. like, no, you don't have to text, but text, but have to go to a psychiatrist and do all that. No, if you feel like you want to just go speak with an unbiased individual whose job it is, is to listen to you talk. Exactly. No. You don't have to have a problem. Anybody can use that tool. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody. Real shit. Queen of Hearts says, if you really... Well, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, J-Charms. I think if you're going to watch this station, go down here. Uh, can you repeat that? Your mic cut out. I'm sorry. I think if you're letting somebody go down here and you see the toxicity and you see it progressing, mm-hmm. and you're letting them focus, I think you should definitely... Uh, you're, you're sure you're the oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. A- absolutely. Yeah. I've been on both sides of that. So you are absolutely correct. I've definitely been an enabler and I've definitely been enabled. And that shit is... Mm-hmm. It, pff, when you get enabled, bro, that shit is whack. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you're doing wrong. You know everything that you got going on to be t- be the toxic person that you are is not correct. But nobody's saying, yo, cut it out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yo, stop that. Nobody's saying that, so it's like, well, I think that, but nobody else is saying it, so who cares? It can't be that bad. It can't be that bad. Exactly, it becomes normal, and that's the that's the rough part about dealing with toxicity with nobody to talk to or nobody to to help you through that, because nobody's saying, Mm -hmm. yo, get this shit together. Like a big thing is, yo, if your partner is enabling you, you need to kick that person to the curb. Seriously, they don't, love you. they don't love you. They don't love you. You know what I'm saying? And and I know that for a fact. I've been with people who let me. I I've been in three relationships, and one of them I was extremely enabled, and the other one, I I was on when I met Izzy. I was on drugs, and she she and she didn't say it, but she was basically like, "Yo, like, I'm a, I'm a, I, I, I'm a skedaddle. Like, I, I I'm gonna get out of here without saying." And she's like, "Yo, like, this." This shit will be temporary, you know what I'm saying? You, if you don't have somebody in your life putting it to you like that, like yo, like you, you're doing this again, like shaming you, like you gotta let that go because that's not good for you, you know what I'm saying? You gotta recognize that toxicity in yourself, and you gotta recognize the toxicity in the people around you because if you're getting enabled to do the things that you're doing, the people around you are not good for you at all, at all. That shit is tough. Your friends should push you to be your greatest. I think I try to surround mm-hmm. myself with people that I know at the end of the day, they've seen me at my worst. They've probably seen me at my best. And so they are steadily always pushing me for my greatness. I will, for, Mud Flap Clapper will forever be the homie because for someone who has never met me in person, I've never met somebody who pushed me to my greatness so hard. Mm-hmm. She'll trigger track me in a minute. Like, mm-hmm. all right, so what we doing here? What are you doing? Hell, what are you doing? Um, do you want to talk about it? Like, you, we got problems. You talk about it. You ain't got to do that. But, you know, like, and at the same time, like, when I was, there were days where I was like, I don't know if I want to stream. Can't. Sh- nah, bro. You got it. Mm-hmm. So, you got this. Do like, it. You know, your friends will push you to your greatness. And they'll tell you when, yeah, you slacking. They'll tell you when, hey, you want it. And mm-hmm. they're going to be 100,000 with you the full way through. I think that's what absolutely. the amazing part of the Twitch and Discord community is about. It, you know, absolutely. Talk to every day. Mm-hmm. Every day. They check on you. They really want to know how are you doing. They're genuine when they ask you, how are you doing today? Mm-hmm. It's important. Mm-hmm. Ah, graham crackers. So, 
Queen of Hearts says. Because they sent them this time, I'm proud. They did. I got two boxes this time. Isn't that great? I'm happy. But uh, <laughs> Queen of Hearts says, community is a huge factor, too. It's so important to have people that are straight up with us and tell us when we're fucking up or making bad decisions. Mm-hmm. Fact. Fact. You got to have a good community of people around you, man. Like, seriously, like, it don't. It don't matter who they are. Like, it don't matter who it is. Like, and it, it took me a long time. Like, it, it wasn't until I got friends of different races and from different communities. Even black friends I had were from different types of, and like, growing up environments. Like, that's a different community right there because you grew up a whole different, completely separate way to me. We're, we're both black, but you grew up completely different. I had white homies that grew up just as poor as me. And we, and we it was still completely different. You know what I'm saying? But we were able to come together and have these experiences. And it's like, okay, well, I'm depressed. And it's like, so am I. But let's make something of it. You know what I'm saying? Let's turn it into something different. Like having a community around you of any type of person, whoever it is, whoever you want it to be, having that community around you is really, really, really important. Because you'll you'll always find some type of positivity to keep going, to keep doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? That shit is is, is really important. Super important. Throw your socks. <laughs> Karen has been typing the most random shit in the chat room, and I, I, I just, I don't know how to like. Teddy, throw your socks. I don't know what you mean. I'm so confused. Yeah, no, I'm like, what are we talking about? Queen of Hearts says, and to be honest, it's super, it's super important for us to recognize our own toxicity and problematic ideas or our actions too. Absolutely, Bruh. absolutely, Bruh. So many, so many things I do. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, throw your socks. I got it now. I got it. I got it. Cause I, I tell you all the time, I be angry as fuck. And and Karen, we we similar in that aspect. When we get mad, nigga, that's a, that's a rage there, right there. So I, I I I I'm one of those people. You know, when you're that mad, you can only be constructive and combative with it. And so, like, I, mean, I think, hey, throw your pillowcase. Throw, don't throw things. I've broken controllers. Call of Duty has has costed me a controller or two, a time or two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, throw your socks if you need to. Ball them bitches up and 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 just get to yonking them bitches against the wall. Whatever you need to, <laughs> to just get that little burst of energy out of you in a constructive manner. That's not gonna destroy your things. Uh, <laughs> bring it back down to ten, and then you're good. <laughs> no facts. That shit is important. Throwing something like not destroying your own property, D- bro. Destroying your own property and destroying yourself toxic. You may not think of it that way, you may be thinking of it as, Oh, I'm just trying to find a way to release, is extremely toxic. And it's a, it's a, and it's a very harmful thing to do to yourself because it damages your self worth. You know, fuck how anybody else feels about you, it damages how you feel about yourself when you do damage to yourself in a way to make yourself feel something. It's a, it's a really fucked up thing to go through, and it's a, it's, it's a terrible thing to put yourself through. You know what I'm saying? And I, like, it's toxic, and it's a hard cycle to get out of, but that's like like Queen said. You got to recognize that toxicity and really find a way to find that constructive, you know what I'm saying? You got to throw your socks, you know what I'm saying? Don't throw your fist in the wall. Throw your socks. Throw, throw, a, throw something at the wall. Throw, you know what I'm saying? Throw a ball. Get a stress, like, you got to find stuff. That's going to take away from the toxicity that's making you want to do things that are not good for yourself in any facet. You know what I'm saying? In any facet. Real shit. Healthy. 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 <laughs> Throw your socks. Real well, talk. It, it took hurting my kid to see I really need that. help. Throw your socks, VD. Throw Real your shit. Socks. And uh, Queen of Hearts said, facts, petty. We'll have a little stress ball or by your PC. Facts. Toxicity is negative energy. If that's all you put out, it will be all you get back. Exactly, Queen. And Mudflap Clapper says, "Real talk. It took hurting my kid to really see I needed help, and that is is something you gotta recognize. You know, like don't nobody know what they're doing. And when it comes to kids, you really don't know what the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? Like neither of my parents knew what the fuck was going on with me or my Winging. little brother. Winging it. Winging it." <laughs> real shit, real shit. The first time me and my mom ever really like got into it, like I was like fifteen. Like she was like we was, you know, what I'm saying in the black community and and most communities, honestly. Like I, you know, 
I don't really know what's going on in a lot of other communities. I'm black. You know what I'm saying? I can't really speak for it. I know a lot of other communities of, of children, they get their asses beat. I, you know what I'm saying? I know white kids get their ass beat. I know Hispanic kids get their ass beat. I know Asian kids definitely get their ass beat. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in the black community, getting your ass whooped was normal. I'm getting my ass beat. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, doing a little dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Me and my, yo. I'm the same way. Yo, my mom, mom passed away two, like two years ago, but... Yo, my mom would put me in her place, man. She would be like, yo. Yeah. Fucking wanna act up? The fucking, like. Yo, get it. She, she, I don't know. She, everyone thought she was, like, native. But to me, she was mixed. And you can tell. She had that mixed mom vibe. Like, she was just like, yo, you want to fuck around? Like, you're not. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I don't know how to explain it. Like, she just, she. She was just like not toxic, but like she. If I was being toxic, she would make sure I would be like she'd be like, "Yo, fucking quit, quit it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> quit it. Quit it. <laughs> Real shit. Right. And that shit. Some parents like take that and they do that and they go, "Ah, like that was wrong. Like I gotta, I gotta reel it in." You know what I'm saying? And some parents go, "Ah." You were fucking up, and then that's then that's yeah. just it, you know what I'm saying? And this, some parents get it, and some parents don't. You know what I'm saying? It is, and it's, I think it's up to to you as the individual to be yeah. like, yeah. okay, that was wrong. I won't be the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's mom was there, but not like Tosi. I had to grow up quick on my own, and like that's hard. You know what I'm saying? So I could. Like, my mom was 21 when she had me. She was young. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, if you don't get it and you don't got no real support system to to help you figure it out, you're going to do shit like beat your kids because you don't understand anything different. And I never, like, I never was like, oh, my mom is beating the shit out of me. Like, I hate her. Ooh. It was always like, all right. Like, I could always recognize the struggle in our situation. I could always go, damn, like, I just got my ass beat. But, like, I definitely was fucking up. We definitely are in an overwhelmed situation. Like, damn. like I, our... I was getting into when I set out and did yeah. what I did to, an, to a certain extent. Like, exactly. I, I knew what I had someone signed up for. I knew. I went out there that day and chose, and chose violence. I chose I violence there today. Supposed to be reckless. Real I shit. Mean, we as kids, we've all done that. And like you look at parents, like I think about it. My mom had the reference of she knew how badly her parents had done, so she did the opposite. And it's mm-hmm. some people out there they don't even have that reference they get to make where they can say, okay, well this was what I knew, and so I'm gonna do the opposite. You just gotta wing it. And parenting is already yeah. winging it. Already. It's already, already winging it. I don't know people who have just been like, yo, off the bat, I knew exactly what I was doing. No. Mm-hmm. I Not at all. Who are having kids right now, and they are still like they're on second kid. And they're like, bitch, I don't know how. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Ooh, shit, I don't know how we gonna do this comps too. I barely just got that one down. Real shit. Still ain't really got them down. Mm-hmm. And kids. Is the first good. couple birthdays is for you to celebrate. You kept it alive. You still here? Three? Oh, high yeah. five! Yeah. yeah. Like, we made it. That. I yeah. my uh, my home girl Kim. She her her daughter her son. He had his ba- his first birthday. I got her drunk. I said, you know what? This is your celebration. Mm-hmm. I said, you kept him alive for three hundred sixty five days. Bitch, you even, you even did that. And look, he's smart. Okay. You, you obviously did that. I tell Karen them in a minute. They kids when they kids is having birthday, y'all take a shot. Mm-hmm. Look at it. You 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 did that. <laughs> look how far they came. It's hard. This shit is hard. There is no easy method. Cause mm-hmm. this thing grows up and it has feelings, opinions, and a mindset of its own. So before when it was little, you could just tell it to go. It went. Now you got to deal with that attitude and some of that. You know where it came from. It was yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, you already know. You like. Ah, how do you find your own kryptonite? And that's sometimes what parenting is. Is how do you find your own kryptonite to teach somebody to do better than you did? And that's exactly. hard. <laughs> it take a whole it's lot hard. of self-reflection. Mm-hmm. It's hard, and it does take a lot of self-reflection. And that's hard for that's hard for people to do in general. I wouldn't be self-reflecting if if like I didn't notice that my parents weren't. You know what I'm saying? I was always like, damn, like y'all don't recognize y'all situation. Okay, let me let me learn to recognize mine. You know what I'm saying? Like. Queen, break those curse. And I was just yeah. about to say, Queen of Hearts said the we have to actively break those generational curses. It's so funny that as parents, our biggest guide is to do the opposite of what our parents did. Yes. Whether you realize it or not, you as a parent taught your kids something. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing I notice out of a whole lot of young parents is they don't realize, yo, whether you, you are proactive or not, this kid is going to learn something. It's up to you as to how this kid learns the lessons and what they learn. Because if you do this right, you recognize you're going to make some mistakes along the way and stumble, but be proactive and fix them. Yeah. Your kid going to learn, hey, we all tumble and fall, but we got to get our shit together. But if you don't, you teaching that kid, all right, I'm, I'm at least know I got to be the opposite of however ain't shit you was. You know, whether you choose to or not, you're you're putting off a lesson. You got to be proactive in how you do it. Facts. That's very true. Queen of Hearts said, you speaking facts. These are all facts. And, uh, all right. Anybody got anything they want to say? I got to go. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's movie time for you. Yo, CSJ, hey. thank you so much. Enjoy the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one. Have a good one. Anytime. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll let you guys know how stream is. Oh, for sure. Up in the Discord game, game. Yeah, you've been excited yeah, to watch I, this, so I'm happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guys. Be safe. Later. All right, guys. So I feel like, honestly, we, we touched on everything. I feel like we got everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This was a great conversation. Like, this was this was phenomenal. I loved every second of it. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? I feel it seemed like we all needed to have this conversation too. So that's, you know, that's a good John. Gonna smoke with the fam, BRB. Send, I see you, bro. Lethal, I see you. You guys see you. Queen of Hearts, Mud Flap. I see y'all, man. Thank you guys so much for coming through. Chronic, Jury, everybody who came through, man. This was a great podcast. Shout out to J Charm. Shout out to Petty Pistol. Episode three was live. It was amazing. You guys gave us great feedback. Shout out to Steve O. You know what I'm saying? This was this was a great conversation, man. You guys are all amazing. Now it's time for some video games, man. You guys, if you know what I'm saying? Everybody good? Anybody want to? You know? Anybody got anything they want to say before we wrap up? Oh, solid. Let's game. Let's go. <laughs> Yo, thank you guys again, man. Shout out to my boy, Chronic. Yo, you guys, Queen Hearts said you guys were great. This was dope. She also said that they really enjoyed this, man. So I'm glad you guys did because I enjoyed myself as well. This was great. Thank you for having me, Earth. Yo, anytime. You know what I'm saying? Every week we live with the good people, man. The, the good people, good opinions. You know what I'm saying? Talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. Good weed, good people, good opinions. The trifecta. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, guys. Give me two seconds. I'm going to throw a BRB up, and then I will be back with some Call of Duty. Better you down for some Call of Duty? I'll play some Call of Duty. I am down for that. I am Boom. down for that. Move my cables around and get my capture card set up. I should be loading in and I'm gonna start a stream. Plus, I bet. I got some Taco Bell. Oh, I, got some I love that for you. <laughs> Jay Charms, enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much again.